Alright, it is time now for the next episode of Video Game Reviews. And we are heading back to the NES for this one to review what is probably one of the most successful and one of the more popular NES games ever. And that game is Super Mario Bros. 3. The game that the Runaway guys are currently LPing for their channel. Now this game was released in Japan in 1988. In the United States and Canada we got it in 1990. And this game of course is a sequel to the uh, Super Mario to uh, Super Mario Bros. For the NES. And, and the premise of the game is simple. You uh, and both just like in the first game you you have to travel through eight worlds and defeat Bowser in the last world in order to clear the game. However, there are some new elements in this game. Like, for example, you've got completely new power-ups. Like, you've got, like, in addition to the uh, regular mushroom and the one-up mushroom, you've got uh, a P-Wing, which I believe allows you to warp between worlds. And there's also the frog suit, which is very handy for uh, underwater. Or actually, no, the uh, sorry, uh, the P wing I think is for something else. It's the warp whistle that you use to uh, warp to uh, other worlds in the game. Yeah, uh, I have played this game numerous times, but I'm not exactly sure what the P wing does. There are all. This game, of course, also has the introduction of Bowser's children, known as the Koopalings. And there are seven of them, one for each of the first seven worlds. And then, of course, Bowser himself in the main. in the eighth world. Now, there is also a super leaf item. And I believe what that does is when you pick one up, it you end up getting a tail and you're able to fly. Now, flying though, you have to time it just right. So you have to get a running start and then hold the button down in order to long enough in order to fly into the air. Now, this game was also featured in the movie The Wizard. And this is a very good game. And this game also has a multiplayer option, just like Super Mario 1 did. And through multiplayer, you can also access several mini-games. Now, another interesting thing about this game. Just recently, uh, three months ago in fact, uh, Nintendo actually confirmed a fan theory stating the, enti that the entirety of Super Mario Bros. 3 takes place as a stage play. Like, for example, you... Now, let me explain what that means. When you first turn the game on, there's the curtains being pulled open, with obstacles hanging from the catwalk, objects bolted to the ground, which is in the skyline. And when Mario finishes a level, he walks off the stage. Likewise, when he starts a level, he enters the stage. So, so this game is a very good game. If you are into NES collecting, I would highly, highly recommend this game. And it's not a hard game to find either, so you should have no trouble finding this one. It is also one of my favorite NES games. I have not beaten it, but uh, I know B. Jocker just played this game on his channel, and he has beaten it. So, good for him on that. 
And I think that'll do it for this episode of Video Game Reviews. Now, a brief explanation about the next two episodes. As you know, the new Star Wars movie came out this past Friday, the uh, December the 18th. So, in honor of that, the next two episodes will be covering Star Wars games. However, and this is also very important, the next two episodes will also be the final two episodes of the season. So, on that note, I will th thank you all for watching, and I will see you all again for the next episode.